Asperger's and asking too many questions. I have some things to address about this. I, a lot of things with that was the worst with my Asperger's happened when I was um, 15. That was sort of the peak of all the weird stuff that was happening with my brain and I know that it was when I was 15 that I was told by two good friends on the same exact day separately that did not know each other that I had to stop asking them questions that I just was asking one question after another after another after another I had to stop doing it it was really bothering them they really needed me to quit it and Sometimes it takes a good friend just to just break something to us gently. We don't realize that something is weird. We don't realize that it's rude or, or that it can frustrate the other person. In my mind, I was making conversation. I didn't think I was doing anything rude. It was like when there was silence, I would think that I would need to ask something like keep the conversation going. I didn't realize that, you know, my head was wonking around in questions. I didn't realize that, you know, that's uncomfortable or rude for the other person in my mind. If there were silences, the conversation needed to keep going. I think that's part of being obsessive compulsive. I think that's part of just having a curious nature and just seeing things on the outside looking in. Where we we live in a world with neurotypicals and as Asperger's people, we understand things in a much different way. We're very inquisitive. We really like to ask questions. And I've also learned that in groups, if I ask questions. I should, it's better just to ask the person in private a lot of times because in groups there's always like a flow of conversation. It's why Asperger's people usually like one-on-one -on -one conversations. They usually don't like to be in groups, I've heard. And a big part of that for me is that being in groups can be very fake. I've seen it where people, it just becomes someone makes a joke, someone makes a better joke, someone makes an even better joke than that. Ha ha ha, it's so funny. With one-on-one -on -one conversation, there's actually intimacy. There's actually real discussions. There's actually personal discussions, things that you wouldn't share in a group. That's why I've always, all of my friends have been one-on-one -on -one friends. A lot of my friends I never even introduced to each other because I either didn't feel like they would get along, they were very different, or because I just wanted that person to be my one-on-one -on -one friend, and it just worked out that way. I'm kind of jealous of a little bit of people that have had like posses and groups of friends to hang out with, but I never really tried to make my friends meet and incorporate that myself. And anyway, I've addressed to people before too, just you gotta be straightforward with an Asperger's person. You can't assume that they'll understand something. Pretty much ever, you, there are things that are obvious to everybody else that are not gonna be obvious to an Asperger's person. You just have to be straightforward with them and tell them if they're doing something rude. And you know, break it to them gently. Don't wait for it to build up and then be all mad and pissed off about it. Just, Break it to them gently when you're feeling it, okay? They don't like it when you wait a long time and then scream a bunch of stuff at them. I've had that happen and I would much rather you just tell me when you're feeling it. Anyway, I wanted to address the question asking.